Hey, welcome back to another episode of the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. I'm still struggling with um, stopping the train at the right position and I got a lot of response on the previous video. Thank you for that. It's always nice to see the engagement that you guys uh, have on this uh, series. Um, but there were a lot of suggestions that I couldn't really use because it was like um, maybe you can make the train run slower and stuff like that but, but if I make the train run slower then the train will stall so a lot of those things are already engineered out uh, but there was one comment and that was from Marine Spec and it's about offsetting the crane and I already thought about that as well but I don't know I thought in a, in a, a very difficult way and I was until now avoiding that solution because it was a lot of work and difficult and I saw a lot of uh, problems ahead but then Marine came with a very good solution which is actually also pretty simple and I think it might work so what he proposes when you have the crane and the train and let me just show you so what Marine proposes is actually that you put a magnet on the side of the wagon over here and you put the reed switch on the crane here and when the train is stopped you actually move the crane forward until the reed switch detects the magnet and that's your starting point and that's also your offset point and I think actually that it should work I don't know why I didn't think about it like this uh, I was thinking way way different and way more complicated but this, this should work I guess so we're gonna try this out but as always there is a problem and that is that the difference between the trains cannot be too great and this is why. So what you see here is the reach of the crane. It starts all the way to the right where it's positioned now and goes all the way to the left to this point over here. When I send the crane all the way to the left and bring it back to the right again, sometimes it doesn't stop at the exact same position that it started from. And that's because mechanical play is at work and I can't do a thing about it. So sometimes there, are, there can be like a centimeter of difference. So also here I have a problem with precision. And I try to reduce that as much as possible. So why am I explaining this? Well, when you have two trains, let's say worst case scenario again, and um, there's a certain distance between these trains when they stop. Like the first train is stopped like you see now, and the second train is stopped like that. It means that I need a bigger reach for my crane. And a bigger reach for my crane means that eventually I get also a bigger offset of my crane. And that's something I try to avoid. So that is why I want to do a sort of worst case scenario test where I get the weakest train and I put three containers on it so it's, it's going to be as heavy as possible and I get the strongest train and I don't put any containers on it. And based on that we're going to see where the trains will actually stop and what the difference between those trains is. Because if it's like a half a meter it's too much for the uh, reach of the crane and it will be a problem and then um, I can't use Marine's idea and if it's less then I can start implementing the idea of Marine because there's no problem but there's one thing left and that is that I was already building the scenario for backing up the train like I discussed in the previous episode and um, if you've paid attention already saw in the previous shot that the train was against a dead end of the uh, track and I gotta remove it again. So I wasn't finished yet, it didn't work properly yet. So no problem, I'm gonna remove it and then I'm gonna build up the test track for the uh, worst case scenario test. Alright, so I've set up the weakest locomotive with the uh, three heaviest wagons as possible. Let's do some tests and after this we're gonna use the uh, weakest locomotive with uh, three empty wagons. Well that's not good. <laughs> It looks like we got two different results on one train. It turns out that the read sensor isn't as reliable as we thought. Now let's, um, let's try the uh, white locomotive with uh, no containers on the wagon and see uh, what happens then. Oh boy! So 
So what you see here is quite a difference. And um, the first thing is that the difference in speed is quite big actually. If you compare these two, it seems like the white locomotive is on steroids or something. It, it's way faster. That results also in another issue and that is that um, the red locomotive was stopped instantly and I do that by reversing the polarity on the rails so I make the locomotive run backwards full force in uh, 200 milliseconds and that makes the train stop. I also use the same 200 milliseconds for the white train but the white train has much more momentum so what you see is you hear the E of the wheels going backwards and then the power is cut off and then you see the train still roll out a bit. And I think if I can make the braking action around 300 milliseconds, um, the red train probably will shoot back a bit while braking, but the white train will be braked much faster. So I think I can make the difference between the red and the white bricks a bit smaller by that. But what you see here also is the read sensor isn't holy at all, like we thought in the previous episode. It turns out that there are still differences. And this is also another reason to go for the system of Marine. So that you can offset the train and it doesn't matter if the same train doesn't stop at the same place. So before we get to that, there's one chance left and that is that I've built the proof of concept that you've seen here on a separate Arduino. And, and that I've done that because the Arduino of the crane, it contains a shield which actually controls the EV3 motors on the crane. And I can't combine the two systems because I don't have enough input and output pins. So that means that I have to upgrade to the Arduino Mega. But the shield doesn't fit on an Arduino Mega. So I have to find out how to manually wire the shield to the Arduino Mega. And that's something uh, I have to find out. So first I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make the crane work again. I'm gonna incorporate also the uh, systems and equipment of the proof of concept that you've seen. And when I've done that, then I can uh, have a look at uh, Marine's idea by placing a reed switch on the crane and a magnet on the tray. So that will be all in next episode. Thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions, uh, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know. Respond to this video below. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I hope to see you next time. Bye. Oh yeah, and like the video. You do have to like the video. Bye.